Good morning and welcome to this service of worship on this, the Lord's Day, here in Rock Lake Presbyterian Church. This is the third Sunday after Epiphany. Several announcements. First, in your bulletin you will see that we have a congregational meeting on January 31st and the items of business to be transacted. It will be a Zoom meeting at noon. Now, if you've never tried to get on to Zoom, we will set up Wednesday, the 27th of January at 7 p.m. to test it out. I will be sending you out an email with what you will need to join both of these meetings. Also, the Stewardship Task Force it has an update in the bulletin as well, and if you have not made your commitment for 2021, this would be the last time before that congregational meeting. So please contact Ken Smith for any questions. Now, it's a challenging time, and the session wants to throw out a challenge to you. Want you, we want you to, do, to participate on a Super Bowl Sunday event on the 7th of February. While we cannot be here in person to bring cans of soup or money, we are sure you would like to continue sharing in this event. So some particulars are in the bulletin as to when and where and how you can participate. Again, a big thank you to our responsive reader for this week, Sandy McNeely. Folks, we're constantly looking for someone to be a part of the service. So if you would be willing to do this, please give the office a call and schedule to be on, on board with us. Now, oh, praise the Lord with me. Let us exalt God's name together. Let us stand for our call to worship. God is calling, do you not hear? You are being called by name for a purpose. God, you, you have, have searched, searched us and know, and know us. us. You, you discern, discern our, our thoughts, thoughts from, from afar. afar. Do not confuse the siren calls of the world for God's call. Do not confuse the values of this world for God's values. You know, you know oh God, God, when, when we, we sit and when, when we stand, stand you, know you know when we, we lie, lie down, down and where, and we, where go. we go. Your deeds and your words are known to God. You were known to God before you were born. Your knowledge, Your knowledge of, of us is, is more than we can, can understand. Your, Your thoughts embrace us amid all you have created. Let us worship God. Let us uh, sing our opening hymn, O Worship the King.
Let us pray. You are our rock and our strength, O God, and in you rests our deliverance. You defend us in the midst of adversity. You protect us from the ultimate harm. You humble the mighty with acts that manifest your transcendent power. The lowly you comfort with your tender embrace. While apart, we gather this day saved by your mercy. Hear now our praises as we herald your greatness. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Friends, come away from your self-importance to examine your relationship with God. Break away from your illusions of independence to realize your responsibility in the church. Claim your unity in Christ with all God's children. Then, Realize how much you need to confess brokenness and seek healing. Let us together give a, the uh, prayer of confession. Join me, please. God, God of, of compassion, compassion and mercy, mercy hear us as we make our confession. confession. Christ, Christ preaches repentance. We, we do, do not, not heed his call. call. Your new day is proclaimed. We dwell on the past. We turn not from our evil ways, nor do we sacrifice those treasures that give us status. We say we obey you, but our deeds betray us. By your grace, renew us and cleanse us of sin. And let all God's people say, Amen. Amen. Hear the good news. The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. God is merciful and just. And Jesus Christ promises redemption to all that believe. As we turn from our old ways and respond in faith, to Christ's call, we receive assurance that we shall be saved. Friends, rejoice. We are forgiven. Let us turn to God to help us to get to a prayer to help us hear what God is speaking to us this morning. Let us pray. Living God, help us so to hear your holy word that we may truly understand, that understanding we may believe, and believing we may follow in all faithfulness and obedience, seeking your honor and glory in all that we do, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Old Testament lesson this morning is from Jonah, the third chapter. First five verses and then jumping to the tenth verse. The word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time, saying, Get up, go to Nineveh, that great city, and proclaim to it the message that I tell you. So 
Jonah set out and went to Nineveh, according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly large city, three days walk across. Jonah began to go into the city, going a day's walk in. And he cried out, Forty days more, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. And the people of Nineveh believed God. They proclaimed a fast, and everyone, great and small, put on sackcloth. Now when God saw what they did and how they turned from their evil ways, God changed his mind about the calamity that he had said he would bring upon them. And he did not do it. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Our gospel lesson this morning is from Mark, first chapter, beginning with the 14th verse. Now, after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. As Jesus, passed along the, as Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, Hey, hey guys, follow me, and I will make you fish for people. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went a little further, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, who were in their boat, mending their nets. Immediately, he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. Him. This is the word of the Lord. 
Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. As I began preparation for this week's sermon, I thought about that Jonah passage. First about his call, and then, more importantly, how the Ninevites responded to Jonah's statement. How they repented in their lifestyle. This is kind of a precursor to the Lenten season for us with its ashes and sackcloth. That's going to begin in just several weeks. While that would have been a really good approach for today's sermon, I was caught by the idea from the gospel. We in our church today stress church leadership. It's important to the, the, the structure of the church and getting people involved. But then it came to me. Maybe instead, what we need to be stressing is followship. That's uh, not really a word. It's kind of just made up. But it made me think. That's what today's text is all about. Which in turn led me to the thought of an old off-Broadway musical called Fantastics. And in, a, in it is a song entitled, Try to Remember. Perhaps you recall that song. Try to remember the kind of September when grass was green and the grain was yellow. It's, 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 it's a beautifully reminiscent melody. But do you recall how that song ends? It goes, try to remember. And if you remember, then follow, 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 follow. It's a song with a lot of follows. I think w I would have just stopped with one follow. But the composer evidently liked the word follow, so they included it a whole lot of times. Sometimes, whenever I hear the, this gospel, I have the same reaction because the Bible is not short on follows. Jesus was all, always calling on people to follow. A great number of these stories end up with, and Jesus said, follow me. In our scripture for today, he had said it to Simon, Peter, and Andrew while they were casting their nets into the sea. Follow me. He said it to James and John while they were mending their nets. Follow me. Last week, we saw Nathaniel as he was confronted. Others, such as Matthew, was sitting in a tax booth. Paralytics were sitting on their mats. Saul was sitting blinded on a dusty road. Follow. Follow. The gospel passage is a beautiful story, and the emphasis is clearly on the word follow. But other times, it's, it's, it's just really implied. Come and see, Jesus would say. Go and do likewise, he'd say. Go into all the world. 
no matter how you phrase it, the essence is still the same. Follow. Follow. You know, becoming a Christian is actually quite easy. But following Jesus, well, that's really the hard part. It's pretty simple to profess your faith. And these days, if you're not a Christian, you're you're just not interested or not paying attention because the invitation is readily available. Churches of most any denomination are all around us. With the pandemic and so many churches going virtual, just like we are, there are a number of services to view on the Internet. With the religious programming found on cable stations, it's not uncommon, uncommon to find people calling you to repentance five or six different channels. We know that conversion happens in an instant. Salvation can occur in a split second. People can experience God's redeeming love in between heartbeats. Becoming a Christian can happen quickly. But the call to do discipleship, to followship, well, not even a lifetime is sufficient. Because no matter how long ago you became a Christian, the call to follow still rings in your ears. The invitation to follow still moves you, still stirs in you. Sometimes it even convicts you. The call to follow can be like a thorn in your side, a pebble in your shoe, or even a swift kick to your backside. I will follow you, Lord, we say, and the voice comes back to us, almost testing us. Oh, you will, will you? From our perspective, we would rather Jesus treat us tenderly and gently and be polite and at least appreciate what we do. But instead of being nice, Jesus insists on being persistent, keeping our feet to the fire so that truly we might become the new creation that we want to that we say we want to be. The words ring in our ears. Follow. Follow. Even long after our initial decision to follow Him. Most of the time, I wish it was just one follow. I'd say, yes, And Jesus would smile and say, thank you. And then I could just continue to do the best I could. But for some reason, Jesus keeps whispering in my ear over and over. He knows that I need that. I always need that. In the Bible, nobody was more familiar with the injunction to follow than Simon Peter. Eager and willing, Peter responds with a definite yes to Jesus' first invitation to follow. Leaving his life as a fisher behind, he eagerly accepts his new life as a fisher of people. But as we know, 
Peter would be asked over and over to consider that initial decision. Follow. Follow. Then he tried to walk on water, but found himself sinking instead. Or when he was sitting in a garden, denying that he ever knew Jesus. While the rooster crowed in the background. Peter knew what it felt like to fall short. But Jesus never lost faith in him. And Jesus never loses faith in us. So, do you know what that means? It means that no matter how much you have failed to heed the call, no matter how often you have said yes, when you really meant to say, uh-uh, no matter how many times you sincerely wanted to follow, but didn't know what that meant exactly, or how to do it exactly, or what the cost would be exactly, no matter how many times you have disappointed God, and disappointed yourself or others in that process. Jesus is always there with outstretched arm, offering yet one more personally engraved invitation. Follow. 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 Thankfully, it's not a one-time thing. Friends, it's a lifetime pursuit. Let us pray. Persistent God, it would take more than a million lifetimes to understand the expanse of your love or to know just what is expected of us in return. Even when we are willing to follow, we are so easily distracted by other pursuits. Thank you, God, for being patient with us, for forgiving us, but also for continuing to challenge us. You are a God who never gives up. May we be constantly renewed by your nudging. This we pray in the name of Jesus, whose call to follow is life's greatest challenge and life's greatest reward. Amen. Let us stand. Say what it is we believe using the Apostles' Creed. Join me. I believe, believe in, in God, God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us now sing, You Walk Along Our Shoreline.
As we approach God's throne with prayer, let us share our joys and concerns. We have a couple of different joys this week. One for President Joe Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris. They have been inaugurated and they begin their work this past week. We rejoice that all went smoothly and pray God's wisdom and blessing on them and on our country in the future. After a few difficulties, the Pollinate Group is back underway at the CLC and should be concluding their construction and beginning to seek clients in a couple of months in the future. Again, our prayers go out to them. In concerns, we lost a a longtime member recently, Barbara Shriver, the widow of Frances Shriver, and she had been at the Sweetbriar Assisted Living Center. We want to keep her family in our prayers. We were advised that uh, friends of the church, Gary Spangler and Mike Wallace, have now the COVID. On a personal note, my family lost one of our own. My daughter in love, Teresa Gray, lost her fight with COVID, and we're grieving her loss right now, along with our children, our grandsons, and great grandchildren. Your prayers would be appreciated. With that, let us turn to God in prayer. O God of Jonah, of Jesus, of Paul and the disciples. Throughout the ages, you have called your people to repentance. We give you thanks for your saving grace shown to Nineveh, that you withheld your wrath because of their repentance. We give you thanks for the promise of Jesus that those who turn from their evil ways and follow him are assured of new life. We give you thanks for all the disciples who followed you and testified to your faithfulness. In spite of their trials, they persevered and left us a legacy of what it means to repent. Have mercy upon us as we join this host of witnesses. 
save us from your anger as we turn to you with contrite hearts, imploring your forgiveness. You know our inmost thoughts, hidden desires, and everything we do in betraying your will. We rely on your goodness to overcome our weakness and your endless mercy to redeem us from sin. Strengthen within us the resolve to be faithful. Give us the needed discipline to let go of old forms of security and to risk putting our trust in your will. As we take our first few halting steps of faith, encourage us with the vision of your reign on earth. Lift us from a sense of of defeat when we stumble and fall. O God of deliverance, make us beacons of light to show others the way. By our examples of faithfulness, bring them to a greater sense of your justice and righteousness. By our claims of obedience, lead them to be willing to practice their faith. Support us with your Holy Spirit as we surround them with our care and concern. Help us make a fresh witness to your saving grace. These and all our prayers we offer in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray, saying, Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy, thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come. Thy, thy will be done. done. On, on earth, earth as, as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, Give us this day, day our daily bread, bread and, and forgive us our debts, debts as we forgive, forgive our debtors. debtors. And, and lead us not into temptation, but, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom and the power and, and the glory forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Let us uh, go forth to serve. Let us sing together. Jesus calls us. Now to the one who is able to keep you from falling and to make you stand without shame in the presence of God's glory with rejoicing. To the only God our Savior, through Jesus Christ our Lord, be glory, majesty, power, and authority before all times, now and forevermore. Alleluia. 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 Amen. Thank you. 